Highly pathogenic avian influenza has disrupted the global poultry industry. South Africa has not been spared. The Southern African Poultry Association says the country has lost over a quarter of its flock since April. Currently, the local industry's biggest concern is a South African strain of HBAI. This strain, known as the H7N6 strain, is more contagious than the H5N1 virus that we've seen in the recent past. Thus far, over 3.2 million chickens in and around Gauteng have had to be culled due to the South African strain. Dr. Sean Biskop, the CEO of Avimune, is here in the Plaus TV studio to share more insights on the matter. Good day, Dr. Biskop. Good morning. How can I help? <laughs> well, <laughs> first of all, this is a massive, massive issue. Um, could you perhaps unpack just the recent history for us so that we can get a better perspective of what exactly is happening across the country? So in April this year, um, we started with an outbreak of H5N1, principally around the Western Cape region. And ultimately, we lost 1.7 million mostly commercial laying birds in that outbreak. Uh, and that outbreak wasn't very different from the outbreaks we've had with H5N1 in, in 2017 and again in 2020. It was serious, but it was something the industry has learned to deal with. Um, with biosecurity, we're able to limit the damage um, and to some extent control the disease. And then suddenly uh, in June, uh, a new outbreak started in Gauteng. Initially, we assumed that it would be more of the H5N1. Um, but uh, after some excellent laboratory analysis, we discovered that it was in fact an H7N6 strain, which had spontaneously mutated, in other words, changed uh, in the local conditions into a chicken-specific form of uh, avian influenza. And it turned out that it was highly contagious and quite deadly uh, to our chicken population. And the scary part was that we quickly have learned that our normal biosecurity measures are quite ineffective against this uh, particular strain. Um, you gave us the numbers, you know, the losses of something along the lines of 3.2 million birds dead. I can assure you there are a lot more birds at risk than, than that number. Now, 1.9 million uh, commercial egg-laying hens, that means that's very close to 1.7 or 1.8 million eggs every day that are not being laid um, for consumers in the country. And then the other really scary number is the 1.3 million broiler breeders that have been destroyed. Uh, that means uh, that we're looking at something along the lines of a million broiler chicks per day that are not available to place onto broiler farms. The impact of this is only going to hit us in a few weeks time um, when those chicks are not placed and are not raised for, um, for slaughter towards the end of October and into November. Okay, now the discussion seems to be focused more and more on vaccines. Where are we currently with vaccines? Are there vaccines available? And are any vaccines in production? What's the situation? Quite right. Um, given our inability to control the disease using um, biosecurity measures, vaccination is a critical part of controlling this disease going forward. Uh, in terms of available vaccines, uh, there are some vaccines available internationally, um, and we are looking to import those as quickly as possible. But even that process will take uh, probably a few months. Um, local vaccines also a good option. Uh, work is being done on producing vaccines um, from the local strain, the H7N6 strain. Again, that's a highly technical process and will take a couple of months. Uh, the vaccine will be quite effective, um, but it's probably not going to be available in the next few months. Okay, so we're not talking years, we are talking months. No, I think we have the support of government uh, in this endeavour. Um, and they have uh, finally allowed us to consider vaccination because until recently that was not allowed at all. Um, so it's a matter of months. I believe or I hope uh, that we'll have reasonable protection um, by the winter of you know, by the coming winter. Yeah. Okay. And um, when we talk about poultry, obviously we talk about the poultry master plan. And there are big dreams and plans to start exporting more and more poultry and products. Won't a vaccine um, hinder 
the possibility to export. The, the concern with vaccinating flocks uh, is that once you're vaccinated, it's more difficult to confirm that a flock does not have avian influenza, and it makes uh, rules and, and agreements in terms of export more complicated. Uh, it certainly not doesn't mean that it, the export becomes impossible. It just means that there's a lot more international negotiations that would need to be done to make that possible again. So certainly for a period of time, we might find ourselves um, not exporting. Um, but to go back to our original discussion, if 25% of our flock is missing, I can't see that exports are going to be a large part of what the country is doing in the short term. And when will consumers really start experiencing this crisis? Well, I think consumers in terms of eggs are already seeing it in the shops. We've seen headlines of, of people getting limited access to eggs. I've no doubt the price has already started to move. Um, on the meat side, uh, it takes about five weeks to raise a broiler. And this crisis has really only reached its most severe part in the past month. So our expectation is that somewhere during the month of October, we'll start to see significant shortages of, of broiler meat uh, from local production. Yes, and of course, about this is roughly about what 10% of all the meat in the country, I would say. So thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Biscop. That was Dr. Sean Biscop, and he's the CEO of Avimune.